Hello, let's continue our advanced Sudoku series with Carrion by Sam Kappelman Lines. This is puzzle number two of chapter one of the Sudoku Gospel. If you want to learn more about that, you can check out my video. I'll have it pop up up there. Um, the first video of the series where I will go over it more in depth, or you can just check out the document in the description, um, or you can just try this puzzle uh, without any knowledge there. Um, but this is from chapter one, which is called Learning to Fly. So all the puzzles in this chapter have something to do with wings, but there's a lot of different Sudoku techniques that could be considered a wing. So it'll be interesting to see what this one involves. If I don't find the correct thing to do, I will at the end uh, go over the correct thing to do, um, but I may find it this time. Who knows? Um, so yeah, that's all I want to say. That's my intro. There's a link in the description if you'd like to try the puzzle yourself, and I'm going to get started right now. All right, we have a lot. Of, okay, yeah, let's, let's start with these two boxes, which... <laughs> seem purposely set up to want to pencil them. Uh, this is 179, that's not a 1, and then this is uh, 4, 5, and 9, and that cleans up a little bit. Um, what else can we see here? All right, let's do a little bit of initial scanning just to seed the grid with, um, with some good stuff here. We've got 4s there, we do have 5s here, 5s are somewhere up there. Um, I'm noticing this cell here, it sees, like, look how many digits it sees. Um, there's basically no repeats either. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, wait, hold on. There should be, yeah, there is a repeat, the twos. Um, yeah, so this is only three or nine, it looks like. Uh, is there... This sees a three. What does the row need? It needs a three. It needs three, four. Oh, this can't be three or four. Yeah, and it needs seven, eight, nine. So that's only seven, eight, nine. Um, over here, I think these can be three, four, seven, eight, nine. I don't think we want to mark these. Um, what does this row need? This row needs one, two, seven, eight, nine. This this sees one two. This is a seven eight or nine. It sees a seven as well. I don't think any of these are that interesting to mark. Ah. Yep. Okay. So this is a wing. This is what's called an X Y Z wing. Found it early because <laughs> it's up here. Um. Cool. So let me go over the logic of the X Y Z wing. So. This is the traditional way to think about it. And in fact, I can use my fancy, my fancy pencil, because I like it. All right. <laughs> so um, we want to think about this cell, which I've marked in green and circled. Um, the green cell we are going to call the pivot. Actually, this can write. Why am I uh, pivot? Ooh. It apparently triggers our, um, our, our pause as well. <laughs> Whoops. So maybe I won't type. Oh my gosh. Okay, hold on. Resume. Okay. I won't type. Um, this is the pivot, and then the, the purple cells are called the pincers. So what you want to do is you want to, and, and the way to find one of these is you need three cells, and the, the ones I've highlighted are, are an example, three cells where between them there are only three unique candidates. So the seven, eight, and nine are the three unique candidates. So three candidates for three cells. Additionally. One of them has all three as a possibility, and the other two have only two as a possibility. And then additionally, uh, the two that have only two as a possibility are different from each other, <laughs> right? So the 8-9 is different than the 7-9. They're not exactly the same. And um, they, both see the, they both see our, um, our pivot. They both see the pivot. And one of them shares a box with the pivot. Um, that's important when you have all three in, in the pivot. So again, three cells with three unique candidates. One of them has three in it. The other two have two each that are different from each other. And one of them shares a box with the pivot. Um, so once you have that, the logic you can think through, and it's always good to think through the logic just to make sure you have found what you think you found. So. 
in this case, we want to think about the three possible worlds that our pivot could be in. World one is that it's a seven. That would eliminate this seven and make it a nine. The next world, world number two, is that it's an eight. That eliminates this eight, making that a nine. Third world is that this is a nine. So the world we care about, or well, not the world we care about, but the, di the digit we care about is the one that's present in all three of them. That's the one that's going to do eliminations. So you can think about it. World one, this is a nine. World two, this is a nine. World three, this is a nine. That means there must be a nine somewhere in these three cells. There is no world where nine is gone. And since there's no world where nine is gone, these two cells, it's always going to be the two that share a row or, or the row or column with the one that's not in the same box um, with the pivot. It's going to be those two. Those can't be a nine anymore, so we can eliminate this nine. Because if this was a nine, you can think about it. This would be an eight. This would be a seven. And then this would be not seven, eight, or nine. So it would be a nothing, um, which is not allowed. So that is the traditional way. Now I'm going to go over a more, a, a kind of an interesting way to think about it as well, um, which kind of touches on the fact that if nine were completely missing, so let, let's actually work backwards. If nine were completely missing from here, I have to be in center mark mode, then this becomes a seven, this becomes an eight, and this becomes a nothing, right? So there has to be a nine somewhere in those three cells. Now, the what you want to look for is three cells with three unique digits where two of them can be completely co be covered by a house. So what do I mean by that? Well, the sevens only appear in these two cells, which can be, which can be covered by row three. Row three covers the sevens, which means that implies that there can only be one seven, a total of one seven in all three cells. The eights are in these two cells. Remember, this cell can't be eight, right? So the eights are in one of these two cells, which can be covered by box one. Box one completely covers those two eights, which implies that there is only one eight in these three cells. So what that, what that tells us is that we're going to have to have a nine somewhere because we can only have one eight in total in the three cells, and one, uh, we can only have one seven in total in, in these cells. And we can't, we can't fill three cells with, in total, two values, right? If we could repeat the eight or the seven, there'd be a different story, but we can't. So there must be a nine in the three cells. And because there must be a nine in the three cells, you look at kind of how those nines interact and they but all see this and I'm, I'm getting a little cluttered there. So let's clear that. So hopefully that's clear. Now, what's cool about thinking about it that way is that um, you can expand that to as many cells as you want. You can have four cells with four unique digits where three of them can be covered by houses, or you can have five cells with five unique digits where four of them can be uh, covered by uh, that. And when we do that, we just keep adding um, we just keep adding letters. So XYZ wing is the smallest you can do this with for hopefully obvious reasons. You can't go fewer than three cells because if it was two cells, it would just be a pair, right? Um, so that, that, that's three, right? If you have four cells, we just add a letter. We do WXYZ wing. Excuse my mouse handwriting here. That would be four cells, right? And so then we, you know, if we want five cells, it would be VWXYZ. So you can go all the way up to TUVWXYZ wing, which would be eight cells, which is, which is fun. Uh, good luck finding those, but anyway. So all of that to say, there's a nine in one of these three cells, so this can't be nine, so that's a three. Yay, we get a, we get a digit. Um, so let's follow up on that three. This, these threes look down, that looks in. So that places this three. These threes look in. Uh, that three looks down, places that three. These threes look in. This three looks in. There's a three in one of these two. There's also a three up here and three somewhere in here. Okay. Um, I want to think about this column, which has got a three in it. We need a... Okay, we need a four in the column. This four sees here, this four sees these two. So four is placed. That gives us the nine and the five. This can't be a nine anymore. Oh, interesting. <laughs> now that nine is gone from here, this is a this is an XY wing. Oh, that's fun. I don't think I don't know if we need it, but I'm gonna use it. So it's the exact same wing, but now it's a, now it's an XY. It's, it's what, no, what some people call XY wing, some people call Y wing. So for this, what you're looking for is almost the same thing, except in this case, our pivot only has two possible values in it. 
and all three of the cells have a different combination of two possible values, that then your pivot is going to be the one that sees both of them. Right? These two do not see each other. They don't see each other. Um, so anyway, what that means is in the seven world, this is a nine. In the eight world, this is a nine. So now we don't even have to worry about this one being a nine. Nine is in one of these two. Those see these cells, and they see these cells. So notice it does do the same eliminations as the X, Y, Z wing. It is a, it is a more powerful technique. It's, ex it's strictly more powerful than the X, Y, Z wing, and it always does more eliminations. Um, and so in this case, that can't be a nine because we get a nine in one of these purple cells. So that's neat. We can use that even though I'm not sure if it was needed, but I'm going to use it anyway. That's not a nine. Um, okay, what else can we do? This, this whole column needs five, eight, and nine. Okay, that's not an eight. Uh, what else can we do here? Um, this row needs four, seven, eight, nine. Not sure about that. All right, let's let's do let's continue our basics again because I, I didn't really get very far with that. So we do have sixes up here somewhere. Um, actually, I do want to look at this column though. We need one, one, six, and eight. So this cannot be the one or the eight. So that's a six. That's a one. No, I did that wrong. Oh, it's because eight isn't an option. It's one, six, and nine. I should have realized it was nine. Um, so six is down here. That's less exciting, but. It's more correct. <laughs> um, I feel like there's something we can do with this stack. Let's scan it. So the four has a buddy. Four is in one of these two. Threes are done. Sixes we got. All right, we got the three. We got the two. Two is up here. We got the seven. Seven's up here. Okay. So this isn't two, seven, or four, so what is it? Um, it could be one, it's not two, it's not three, four, could be five, it's not six, seven, could be eight. Interesting. Oh no, it's not a, sorry, it's not seven, yeah. Uh, one, five, or eight, wow, that's more than I thought it would be. Okay. Um, let's keep scanning. This box is full, so the five has a buddy, goes there. The eight has a buddy over here. The two is down here. Interesting. We almost have a quad here. Two, three, eight. We just need one more digit, but I'm not gonna. I don't know if I'm gonna find that. Oh, I do. I do find it. It's the four. In fact, the fours look down. Four is in one of these two. So now what I've got here. <laughs> this is fun. Um, I've got a two, four, a two, three, four, eight hidden quadruple in this box. Right. That's just. That's what our pencil marks are telling us. And whenever you get n pencil marks and n cells all limited to the same, same n cells. Um, you can convert those to center marks. So all of these convert to center marks, and we end up with a two four a two three four eight quad, which is fun. Um, but this box is empty otherwise. <laughs> um, do we have anything else up here that I missed? So they're more vertical here. We do need sixes. Sixes are up here. So these two cells are not are not these four or the five or six. So these are down to three at best. Sorry, three at worst. Um, I say I keep saying that wrong. Uh, so we do need a one. Actually, where does one go in this box? Hmm. One could be anywhere here. Okay. Anyway, we need a one. We have the two, three, four, five, six. We need a seven and a nine. Okay. Neither of these are two. So these are from three, four, seven, nine. Okay, I'm not seeing what I'm supposed to be seeing here. <laughs> um, there really isn't much more to scan, is there? Did I get the fives? Yeah, I got the twos. Yeah, I got the eights. Yeah. Um, one, seven, nine. 
Ah, four, four in this column is here. We kind of knew that. Okay. <laughs> um, six is here. I'm trying to look at geometry here to see if that'll help. We need a five in this row. Ooh, interesting. Five and in finally found something. So I was looking at this five. It can't be here. This five sees here. And this five sees here. So this is the five. That gives us a four. These are not fives. Gives us this five as well. That's not a five. Um, two, seven, eight, nine. Interesting. Wait, we need a one. One, two, seven, eight, nine. Okay. What did I get? I got this four. So those fours look over now. Four is down here. I also got this five. These fives look in. This five looks down. That's a five. Can I finish the fives? It looks like I can. I got the five and the six, and those are done now. Sixes now look in, putting a six in one of these two. Fives are done. Okay, this is an interesting pattern because, yeah, so like this two here is good because that causes twos here to point up. That makes this a four, that an eight. That resolves our entire quad. These aren't fours. Um, what do we need here? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. We need seven and nine. Wait, seven, eight, and nine. So the eight can only go here. This is a seven or a nine. That places the one in here. That's not a one. That places this one. Um, ones are not placed. They're up here. This is getting busy. Um, this row, we need a one. The one is placed. Let's actually follow up on ones. That puts a one here because these two ones looking in. Whoopsie. And this one looking in. Um, yeah, we're down to this rectangle of ones here. Okay, what else do we need in this row? We need a five and a nine. That's the nine, that's the five. Oop, no, we don't need a five and a nine. We need a seven and a nine. It does make a seven nine pair here. And here. Fun. Um, lots of seven nines. I could probably make a seven nine chain if I wanted to. <laughs> uh, but that seven nine pair does make that a three. Only place for three in the row, actually. Deet, deet, deet. There's a three there. Our uh, threes are done. Very nice. We need four, seven, eight, nine here still. I'm going to start just filling things. Uh, two, seven, eight, nine here. It's not a two. I feel like. How about this column? Two, seven, nine. It's not a seven. Seven nine pair looks up. That's not seven or nine. Um, this is two seven eight nine, not a nine. What am I missing? <laughs> Just keep penciling, I guess. This column has four left. We need a two, two four six eight. Yeah, all the evens. So that's not four eight. This is not two four or six. Two four or eight, I mean. It has to be a six. That makes that a two. That makes that an eight. That makes that a four. Nice. That was a good find. All right. So we get the nine here. We get the seven. We get the two. We get the one. It gives us the eight and the one here. We have a six nine pair here. These aren't four. It's not six. These aren't seven. That's not eight. Okay. We get the four nine pair here. That gets the seven and the eight. That's a seven and a nine. That's two and seven and nine. Seven, nine, seven, nine. Get all the sevens and nines. Uh, this is a six. This box, we need a four. That gives us nine and four. We also need a seven. Um, we need a two in this box, which goes here. We need a six in this box, which goes there. It gives us the nine and the six. We need eight and nine, which go like that. All right. Cool puzzle. Um, yeah, it seems like there there was only basics after we found actually we found we found the X wing X Y Z wing and then we found an X Y wing out of it. Not sure if the secondary X Y wing was needed or just Y wing if you prefer to call it that. But uh, it was fun. So yeah, uh, thanks Sam for letting me do this puzzle. This was very cool. Um, hope you enjoyed it as well. If you did, then why not leave a like, subscribe, and a kind comment below.